In our study of engineering systems, it's helpful to understand the distinction between complicated and complex systems. The reason this is helpful is because if we confuse systems that are complex for those that are only complicated, there's going to be a lot of phenomena that we're unable to explain. We'll wind up confused because we'll be thinking about the system in the wrong way. So these two words, complicated and complex, which are often used as synonyms for the phrase, just difficult to understand, these two words give us a way of making distinctions about how to think about a system. And they lead to different understanding of the causal mechanisms that explain the phenomena we observe. So we're going to understand what's complicated and what's complex. In a previous video, we said that engineering systems have boundaries. They must have multiple components. That Those components interact both with each other and the environment. That is the area outside the boundary. And we said that engineering systems, because they're objects of design, must have a purpose. Engineering systems often fall into this category of complicated. And what does that mean? Well, certainly difficult to understand. Both complicated and complex systems can be different, difficult to understand. But why? What are the characteristics of complex systems? The first typical characteristic is that they have many parts. They have lots of components. They have lots of interworkings. That is, they may have lots of variables. They may have lots of pieces. They may have lots of details. More than we can retain in our working memory at one time. And sometimes that's more than just seven. Because the system is complicated, we can't hold in our working memory all the important state variables or pieces that we have to keep in mind at one time. And it helps us to have spreadsheets or models or inventories or bills of material or other sort of exosomatic uh, memory aids to help us keep track of all that. So lots of components. They can be difficult to decode. That is, trying to understand how these components work together is not a matter of any single interaction being beyond our comprehension, but the multiplicity of interactions is so complicated that we often have to follow complex decision or logic trees to decode why things are happening. It's not that there's a mystery per se, that is, there's no fundamental step uh, or no step that is fundamentally uh, difficult to understand. But the combination of all of these steps taken together means that we have to uh, create tools for decoding the system in a systematic way that go beyond our ability to keep it all in our head. So think of complicated as difficult in these ways. But they're also reliable. In a complicated system, a machine, an automobile is a machine, for example, you get the same output if you add the same set of inputs. That is, within the boundary of the system, any interaction with the complicated system will result in a reliable prediction or a reliable outcome. The environment may turn the key in the ignition and the engine will start because the system, when it's in good working order, is reliable. Complicated systems behave as they have been designed to behave. So machines are a good example. Complex systems, on the other hand, complex systems are characterized by feedback loops. And feedback loops don't have to have lots of different pieces to get really complex. 
we might have only two elements of a complex system. We'll call this one the predator and this one the prey. For example, in the classic Locke Volterra predator prey uh, system, we might have the fox and the rabbit. Well, the population of foxes depends upon the population of rabbits because foxes eat rabbits. But the population of rabbits depends upon the population of foxes because rabbits get eaten by foxes. So you might say, if the system were merely complex, tell me how many foxes we have, I'll tell you how many rabbits. When we're in a complex, complicated system, we get sort of reliable, predictable outcomes. The population of foxes, the population of rabbits might be have a little bit of randomness and then steady out over time. And that's not what happens in even a simple model like this that's complex. We find this does not correspond with what we observe in nature. Instead, there are wild and seemingly chaotic swings in these populations because their interaction is uh, beyond our intuition. We have a pretty good intuition for linear systems, but complex systems are often nonlinear. And when we're working with a nonlinear system, we can no longer reliably extrapolate beyond our set of observation to make a prediction. Although our minds are pretty good at this linear extrapolation in a nonlinear system, our minds are overwhelmed by the curve of linear process of the, uh, or phenomena in the systems that are beyond our capacity to extrapolate. So we have this characteristic of feedback loops in a complex system, this characteristic of nonlinearity. We also have something called stochasticity, which is a fancy word for randomness. And there's a particular kind of randomness that exists in both complicated and complex systems. But here, the randomness is important because a small change in a system with a feedback loop, say a s introduction of one more fox or one less fox, might lead to a virtuous feedback loop, a positive feedback loop of increasing effects. That means this stochasticity is amplified by the feedback loop in a way that a small change that could have a random cause results in a very large change in the system. Whereas machines are complicated, life is complex. The interactions between different living creatures are often better off modeled as complex systems, which exhibit what is called emergence. That is to say that at some higher scale of observation, the randomness, the feedback loops, the nonlinearity, they work together to create a phenomena that is observable at this higher level, at this higher scale of observation than its underlying causes. One way to think about this is that automobiles are complicated, but traffic, which involves the interaction between all of the drivers and the automobiles, traffic is complex. This distinction helps us know how to model the system. When we model the system, we create an oversimplified representation of the system, and it helps us pay attention to some things and ignore others. When we have the view that the system is complicated, we tend to create representations that are in accord with our hypothesis or our pre-analytic vision of the system as complicated. When we perceive the system as complex, then we will look for, we will pay attention to, rather than abstract away. We'll pay attention to the feedback loops. We'll pay attention to the nonlinearities. We'll pay attention to those important sources of stochasticity. And we will look for the emergent phenomena in the complex system.